Hey y'all, welcome back for week 10 of Amy Miller Recruiting and Yoga Pants. We are still talking about money. <laughs> I told you this was gonna be a long one. I had to actually make some crib notes for myself because uh, I have attempted to record this at least four times and I keep going like up into 20 minute territory, <laughs> which is, it's too long. <laughs> I promised you guys 10 minutes or less. I haven't been in 10 minutes for weeks. <laughs> um, all right, so, and this is why, because I start rambling and then by by the time I realize how long I've been talking, we're way past the deadline. Okay, so a few things I wanna make sure we cover today. We are talking about negotiation. We are covering uh, the the kind of how to empower you as a job seeker, how to uh, think about this as a recruiter, um, what are some of the, the pieces to consider, what's negotiable, what's not negotiable, all of that. So let's just jump right in. I wanted to really lean in on this idea of the person that goes first loses. All right, who's heard that? Who, who is taught, who went to some sales training or <laughs> read some 80s negotiation book <laughs> or something that said, oh, the person who goes first loses. Um, I'm gonna say that's not true. In fact, I will go so far as to say that is absolute, complete, total, utter stinky bullshit and here's why i firmly believe that the person who goes first controls the conversation how about that i really believe that the person who has a number who's willing to say this is my boundary, this is my stake in the ground, this is my starting point, this is my minimum, however you wanna word it, that person now gets to control the conversation. I, I really believe that. And I'm perfectly content to let my candidates drive. I, I am, because this is your paycheck, this is important to you. If you're comfortable giving me a number and saying, I've done the math, I've listened to your videos, <laughs> I know what I'm worth, I'm going to put that stake in the ground. Awesome. If you don't want to, I have no problem being in charge. <laughs> and it doesn't mean that you're not going to get a great offer. It, it doesn't mean that the person who doesn't give the number loses. I don't think there should be a loser in these negotiations. Why shouldn't everybody win? Like how, how, how crazy is that? Like I can't even wrap my head around the idea that somehow we're in some kind of potato sack race and I've got to beat you to the finish line with a low ball offer. Like that's ridiculous. I, I don't get it. I'm going way off topic here. The point is I'm a firm believer in that the person who goes first controls the conversation. I would encourage you, whatever side you're on, to be willing to go first, but more importantly, understand that there should not be a loser. Point blank period. No one should come out of a negotiation feeling like they just stepped out of a boxing ring. That is an absolutely horrible experience that no one should have to go through, including the recruiter. Okay, but we'll talk about that another time. So, all right, with that in mind, and I probably lost half of you now because you just simply don't believe me. <laughs> Let's get into the nuts and bolts of this, okay? This negotiation thing. Um, so somebody is given a number. <laughs> somebody broke the seal here. Um, and now we wanna really get into what does an offer look like? Every company is gonna be a little different. There are going to be maybe some industry best practices for the purposes of this video, I'm going to just stick with what I know, <laughs> which is big tech. And so the components of our offers are generally going to be base salary, uh, some kind of sign on. Not everybody does a sign on, but it's relatively common in some fashion, whether that's sign on payments, a one time sign on bonus, things like that. There's there's different ways that that's done. And uh, equity. Equity is typically a big one. If you're talking to a startup or you're talking to a pre-IPO, there may be talk of options. So really make sure you understand 
what the real cash money is. <laughs> so, and if it is equity, when is the equity yours? So you can sell it if you need to or, or cash it out or whatever that looks like. So um, these are the things that I want you to really think about and make sure you're asking your recruiter. What are the, the components of the offer? Once you have that, we want to ask the second question. What's negotiable? Just ask the recruiter flat out. Okay, great. I understand these are the three elements to the offer. Uh, is there room in any or all of those areas? Can the base be negotiated? Can I ask for more sign-on cash? Is there a possible uh, possibility of more equity? You don't know if you don't ask. Just ask. Might be no. Probably yes. So uh, make sure that you understand the, the parts that are negotiable and what you can do. Here's some things that are not negotiable, generally speaking. Time off. If you're going to work for a ginormous corporation that employs hundreds of thousands of people and all of those people are on the same PTO plan, why are you gonna get a different one? I, I, I can't tell you how many times an expert or a thought leader or a whatever they call themselves has said, oh, you have to negotiate every last line item and you should negotiate the time you spend in an elevator and you should negotiate, like, like you're gonna be on the same elevator with everyone else. You can't negotiate that. You're not getting your own elevator. <laughs> I mean, it's just silly, the things that they come up with. So just talk to your recruiter. What realistically can I expect to negotiate here? A lot of times the cash elements are trickier. Equity, we generally have a little bit more room to move because equity is heavily dependent on retention. Equity vests over a period of time, and if you leave before that period of time, the equity does not go with you, my friend. So we can usually get creative there because we know that if you're here, you're doing a great job, and if you're doing a great job, we wanna keep you, and therefore we wanna keep your money flowing. So, um, so that is the next point. Make sure to find out what parts of the offer are actually negotiable. Now, you may be thinking, okay, that's all well and good, but my mortgage is this, and my car payment is that, and my kids go to this private school. We don't care about any of that. We don't wanna know. We will stick our fingers in our ears and do the la la song. It is not relevant to your negotiation. Now, when you're debating it with your spouse or your partner or your friends, you can certainly do that, you know, and you can have those conversations, but it's not going to make a difference. No recruiter ever that I know of has gone back to their comp team and said, well, you know, Sally's kids are in Catholic school and it cost her $30,000 a year. So I'm asking you for an additional 10K on her base salary. Comp is gonna think you've lost your mind. <laughs> I mean, it's just not a factor. So keep that in mind. We are offering you a, a compensation package based on your skills, experience, expertise, and interview performance. We are not offering you a package based on your lifestyle. Okay, so how you spend that money is your business. Uh, how we determine the money that we want to pay you is definitely our business and yours, and hopefully we're working on this together. Um, so we really, one, one final thing on that point that's probably worth mentioning, we don't wanna know your total comp, your current comp. We do wanna know your total expectation. <laughs> yes, that for sure we wanna know. So current comp, and this is a US-based thing, so, so bear with me, my, my viewers in other parts of the world. In the United States, more often than not, most companies are following a handful of states that have put into place very specific guidelines around asking for compensation information. Uh, we cannot ask you your current comp, and frankly, your current comp should have shit to do with your final offer. It should be based on expectations, labor market info, which we've talked about before. So if somebody's asking you for your current comp, ask them, why do you need to know that? And how does that impact my compensation? It's a reasonable question. All right, last couple of points here because we're getting dangerously close to 10 minutes. Uh, arbitrary deadlines and when to walk away. Yes, sometimes people say no to offers. Can you believe it? <laughs> um, walking away, it's not something you wanna take lightly. You have invested a lot of time, a lot of effort, a lot of emotional currency 
into getting to this stage. I get it. You would not have gone through this process if you didn't want the job. So ideally, we're able to give you the space and the information to make that decision, but also understand it is okay to say no. If we're not giving you the compensation package you need, if we're not answering the questions that you have, if, if we're just not able to make this a safe decision for you based on your emotional currency, it's okay to walk away. The recruiter is going to be pissed off. If they're an agency recruiter, they're going to lose a commission. I mean, it's sad, but this is your life. This is your paycheck. This is your job satisfaction. This is your career plan. So yes, these are things we want to be talking about all along. Ideally, by the time we get to an offer, it's not a surprise, but understand that we get it. There's going to be times when it's just not the right package and you need to walk away. And so my final point there, deadlines. Uh, recruiters are notorious. <laughs> Some recruiters really love their deadlines. They really love to say, you have to give me an answer right now. You have to verbally accept this verbal offer before I'll even put an offer letter in your hand. And to that recruiter, I say, not today, Satan, and here's why. If you have earned an offer letter from an organization, you deserve to have that offer letter in your hand. Now, I haven't worked for everybody, worked for a lot of companies, but not all of them. I understand that there may be companies that have some weird ass policy that they can't print an offer until they know you're saying yes. I would call bullshit on that policy. I, I gotta be honest, I, I've never known of a company that makes it like a hard and fast, like legal has approved this rule. I absolutely know of companies and more specifically recruiters who try to convince you that that's what's happening. So now here's the time when all the recruiters start sharpening their pitchforks because now I'm bad mouthing and bullying and doing whatever it is I do when I call out bad behavior. But I am telling you, one job seeker to another, one candidate to another, one working mom and wife to another working person, you have the right to have that offer letter in your hand, to look over the information, to hold it, smell it, enjoy it, rub it on your face, frame it and put it on your wall, whatever you wanna do with it, it's your letter and you earned it, whatever the numbers on it might be. So you should expect to receive said offer now, granted, they usually come electronically these days, but you can still print it out if you really want to. <laughs> and you should also be given a reasonable time frame in which to respond. Might be two to three days, might be five days, but if someone is demanding an answer from you before you're ready to give it, and before you've actually seen the written legally approved documents, you don't have to say yes. If you're struggling with how to respond to that, I want you to drop a comment, send me an email, amy at recruitinginyogapants.com, and we can problem solve. We can strategize on how to uh, get past that because I just think it's a bad practice. And I think getting to the finish line and going through all the negotiations and thinking about all the things that we've thought about, you deserve that piece of paper, my friend. So let's help you get it. Amy at recruitinginyogapants.com drop a comment, let me know what you think. We might round out this week with one more comp video, just tie it all together. Let me know if there's anything I've missed, anything in particular that you want to go deeper on, and uh, we'll see what next week brings. All right, have an awesome weekend. I'm gonna stay quarantined in my house north of Seattle, and just prayers to all the people dealing with coronavirus and lockdowns and quarantines and all that fun stuff. So we'll see you next week.